Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, would you please rise for the academic procession and remain standing for the singing of O Canada.
Nam to snow to my honored and respected friends, my name is Chachlia. I'm the daughter of the late Tzatzumpkin, Henry Charles. It's my honor to be here today to share a bit of who we are in our Hunkaminim dialect. I am proud to see our Musqueam Slani, our Musqueam women, walk across the stage today. Proud of my family <laughs> for walking across the stage. And to the school teachers, to all the graduates, the students, the parents, everyone, I'm so proud of you today. <clears throat> Far and wide, O oh Canada, 
we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, Emily. Emily King is a student in our Theatre Arts Studio 58 program. Please be seated. <clears throat> Mr. President, representatives of the board, members of faculty and staff, honored guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Snowayeth Laylam, Langara College, and thank you for joining us today. I declare open this 2017 convocation of Langara College. This convocation is assembled for the granting of credentials and awarding of honors. My name is Dr. Ian Humphreys, and I am the Provost and Vice President, Academic and Students at Langara College, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies today. Please be aware that this ceremony is being recorded for viewing in other locations on campus and on our website. On behalf of the Snowayeth Laylam community, I wish to acknowledge with respect the history, customs, and culture of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Musqueam Nation on whose traditional lands we are meeting today. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of our platform party. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Dr. Lane Trotter, President and Chief Executive Officer. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> not following the instructions. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Lowe, Queen's Council, First Vice Chair, Board of Governors. <laughs> oh, I see. What can I say? <laughs> Mr. Scott McLean, President, Langara Faculty Association. <laughs> Dr. Vida Rudal Persad, Board Governor. So you know what's gonna happen now, somebody won't get any applause and they're going to feel really bad. <laughs> Ms. Dawn Palmer, Vice President, People Services. Ms. Gail Sparrow, former chief of Musqueam First Nation and Langara elder in residence. Dr. Tung Chan, honorary captain of the Royal Canadian Navy and chair of the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21. Mr. Victor Soka, vice president, administration and finance. Mr. Daniel Thorpe, dean, continuing studies. Mr. Ian McBain, Interim Dean, Faculty of Arts. Ms. Jacqueline Bradshaw, Interim Dean, Faculty of Social Sciences and Management. Ms. Margaret Heldman, Dean, Faculty of Science. Mr. A.J. Patel, Vice President, External Development. Mr. Clayton Munro, Dean of Student Services and Registrar. Mrs. Moira Guckstetter, Director, College Advancement, and Executive Director, Langara College Foundation. <laughs> Mr. Tomo Tanaka, Division Chair, Creative Arts. Ms. Antonella Alves, Division Chair, Management Programs. Mrs. Shona Reynolds, Department Chair, Financial Management and Business Computer Applications. And finally, Ms. Patricia Woods, Instructor, Langara School of Nursing, and Coordinator, Healthcare Assistant Program, Continuing Studies. Oh, well done. <laughs> Congratulations. 
I would also like to recognize that representatives from the Langara Students' Union have joined us in the audience for today's ceremony. Thank you for joining us. At this time, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they appreciated it. At this time, I invite Gail Sparrow, former chief of Musqueam First Nation and Langara elder in residence to bring traditional territorial greetings. Gail. You can give me a standing ovation when I finish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say to you, it's you while, my CMs, which is a warm welcome in the Hunkaminum language from the Musqueam First Nations. I add the word CM because it's important today that the students under the name of Sanewith Laylam Langara are graduating from this institute. So it's important to recognize that they have strived and struggled through many years of studies and time and sacrifice to gain a certificate from this institute. For those that don't know much about Musqueam, Musqueam is located about a 15 minute drive from here if there's no road work. If there's road work, it's 45 minutes. And just going southwest, the community resides today of 1,200 strong. At one time, we had a population of just only two or 300. And we've prospered in the past 50 years since I was born in a population now that's strong and proper, prosperous. Muskegon First Nations also follows protocol. And before I forget, and I might get hit on the head from somebody, that I must recognize that we've also blessed the name upon the President Lane Trotter, is known as Takaya which his name is, means wolf, and also to recognize from our Muskegon First Nations our elder Mary Charles, who's here, and her family, the Charles family, and the Grant family, and the Sparrow family, and the Guerin family, recognizing that their children are here graduating from this institute. So part of knowing who Muskegon is is we want you all to know that the very earth that this school is built on was a traditional village of the Muskegon First Nations. We roamed and, and worked the land and prospered with rich cultural heritage. And so Nehoth Lalem has a significant name because it's called House of Teachings. And in the House of Snow, Snoweth, you learn about who you are from the matriarch and the patriarch. And the family lived the mother, the father, the brothers, the sisters, the cousins, aunts, and uncles. And your Snoweth was either you took the teachings and you took the best and learnt wise teachings and it stayed with you. But if you didn't listen and you took teachings in that from there that weren't good teachings, then again, your destiny was outlined for you also. So just like Langara, the students have taken the best from an institute with the name Sanewith, which is House of Learning, and have now graduated. Musqueam people have always been one of the first. We had the first ever youngest chief and council in Canada. It was Chief Johnny Sparrow, Andrew Charles, counselor, and Jim Bill Guerin, a counselor. We had the first ever elected female chief in Canada, Gertrude Guerin. We had first ever cases of lawsuits against the government for breach of trust and our fishing rights came from Musqueam. The first ever village that actually transferred from a small community to a large prosperous community under the direction of the late Percy Charles and Willard Sparrow and the Guerin chiefs. They actually transferred a reserve from a small village site to a large village site. They proved that we could lease our lands, and leasing our lands, we could transfer a small village on the fore fore foreshore, what had suffered many consequences of poverty and poor infrastructure, to a new prosperous village over 55 years ago. No government had to tell them how to do it. No government could restrict them. It was the wisdom and the knowledge and the strength and the power of the leadership that did that, and we set a path for the many villages in, in our country today under First Nations. We want you to know that we are welcoming people. You are welcome at any time, anywhere you are, to come over to our community, and we welcome you. The significance of the words when we say haichka, we put our hands up and we say thank you. And that's our open arms and open hands that we have. We are one, we're of one mind, one spirit is our belief in Muskegon First Nations. So today, when the students go forward, you've graduated from an institute rich in cultural heritage, rich in tradition, and more importantly, rich on the land that the school's located on. I leave you with the Muskegon's message that always know 
that we too are coming from a prosperous community. Through education is knowledge, knowledge is power, and your certificates does not have anywhere written there for you to quit. And historically today, we have four students under the healthcare assistance program who are graduating for the first time under the new name from Musqueam. We're honored, we're proud that we have these four ladies graduating for the first time from Musqueam under the new name. So now it's your turn to go forward. Yes, Charlene, we give them a standing ovation. Um, I want to just recognize first that you know, because it's, it's not an easy road coming from the community and going and transferring to the college to take a course. And it's Evangeline Guerin, it's Paige Grant, Laura Paul, Tracy Sparrow, and Julie Sparrow. So when they take the stand, recognize their Musqueam students graduating. And for the history books, they're our first under Sine with Lalem. I want to leave you with something that's important of a name. My brother is the sitting chief. His name is Snock. It's Chief Wayne Sparrow. My sister, a former chief, was Talk to Not, Wendy Grant John. I never was given a name during my tenure as chief. So my grandfather felt bad for me. And he said to me, I'm going to give you a name. He lived to be 100 years old. And at the time, I was single. I still am. He called me to his home, and he said, everyone has a name. You don't have one. I want to give you a name to be remembered for, and also a name that will bring some laughter and joy into people's life remembering you. He said to sit down, which was Amit, and I sat down. He put his hands on my head, and he said, in America, they give names like chief with many horses, chief with many goats, and you're a chief that's not married, and I anoint you today as chief looking for a husband. He passed during my tenure as chief. I'm the chief, the former chief, still looking for a husband. <laughs> I'm grateful for that name because it's important our people too were ones of laughter in the house of Sinewith. There's lots of laughter, lots of love. And he said, if you feel a moment to share that, share that story. And I share that with you. Chief looking for a husband today from the Musqueam First Nations. And I raise my hands to all of you. And if we could do that together and say, Haichka, Haichka. My CMs from the Muskegon First Nations of one heart, one mind, one spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Gail, for that very important greeting. We value our relationship with Muskegon and appreciate your participation today. I now invite Jeff Lowe, first vice chair of the Langara Board of Governors, to bring greetings to the convocation. Dr. Trotter, distinguished guests, friends, family, staff, faculty, and of course our graduating students. It's truly my privilege to make these remarks on behalf of the Board of Governors of Langara College. You probably all feel this has been a long time coming. But we're here to mark a milestone in your life of each graduating student. And it's, it's a very important day for each of you. But it, keep in mind, it's also a very important day for Langara College. And it's a very important day for the board as well. It's very, very gratifying to sit up here, see so many bright young faces and so many loving family and friends with you. So on behalf of the Board of Governors, I want to congratulate each of you on your graduation. We know that this milestone has only been reached through your dedication and hard work. The motto of Langara College, as you probably know, is freedom through knowledge, although it's usually in Latin and I can't pronounce it. So, um, but education, it's the great enabler in our society. It's going to open doors that would otherwise remain closed for you. You've all made a very important investment in your future. You must be all very proud of this accomplishment. But the hard work is now done, and it's time for a celebration. But we need to celebrate the strength and support you've received from your family and friends. We need to celebrate the incredible effort of the amazing, dedicated staff and faculty we have at this college. But most importantly, we need to celebrate your hard work and what you've achieved. We understand that the successful completion of your program of study it requires a lot of persistence. It requires a lot of sacrifice. 
On behalf of the Board of Governors, I want to offer our heartiest congratulations on your graduation. I'm delighted that I'm able to help you celebrate today. It's a tremendous honor for me to do that. I also, on behalf of the Board, I would like to extend an invitation. Please stay connected to Langara. It's part of you now, and we really want you to help us shape the future of this great institution together. So let me close by wishing every one of you success in your very bright futures. Thank you very much for choosing Langara. Thank you for all of your hard work, and congratulations on your graduation. Thank you, Jeff. I'm now pleased to call upon President Lane Trotter, who will provide greetings. Thank you, Ian. Platform party, colleagues, students, guests, welcome to the 2017 Convocation Ceremony of Langara College. The six Convocation Ceremonies that we are hosting this week are the largest number that we have ever hosted. But before I continue, I want to acknowledge and thank the Musqueam Nation on whose unceded territory Langara College is located. In fact, the college is located on what was once the site of a Musqueam village, and Langara thanks the Musqueam First Nation for their support and for giving the college the name Snoweth Lalem, which means House of Teachings, which is very appropriate. Langara is a special place that helps students to pursue their goals, whether it is to further studies, to gain the skills needed to enter the labor market, or to career advancement or transition. And since Langara's inception in 1965, the college has always been focused on helping students succeed. From our beginning, whether that was in temporary facilities, until our current campus opened in 1970, or when we became an independent institution in 1994, students are at the center of all we do. And to date, Langara has more than 100,000 alumni who have gone on to pursue their dreams and add their skills and talent to the richness and diversity of our society. Their contributions have made our community a better place, and in return, the community has continued to place its trust in Langara to educate and train not only the next generation of young people, but to support those seeking new pathways to a better future. But we would not be here today celebrating the success of our graduates without the people that have supported them during their education. We need to thank those, many of whom are here today, who have supported you, our students, while you pursued your studies, whether it was your parents, other family members, spouses, and significant others, or even friends. And I particularly want to acknowledge and thank our faculty and staff for their dedication to, and commitment to your education and success. Finally, I also want to thank our Langara College Foundation and those members from our community who have donated funds to create scholarships and bursaries to support student success. They have all played a role in helping our students be here today. So on behalf of the college, I want to publicly thank all of those individuals for their support you have provided in helping our graduates succeed. To our students, you've, ach you've achieved a milestone in being here today. But before you leave, I want to take this opportunity to offer you some advice, especially since you're a captive audience. Recently, I had the privilege to listen to Julie Payette speak at the annual Colleges and Institutes Canada Conference about her experiences as an astronaut, seeing the Earth from space, from both the Space Shuttle and the International Space Station, which is a partnership between the United States, Europe, Japan, Canada, and Russia. It's been in space for 16 years with a goal to use, to use science to constantly push the limits of knowledge. One of the points that Ms. Payette made is that we seldom hear about the International Space Station because it works. She also said, in space, performance, skills, ability, and competence are what count, not gender or race. The International Space Station has Russian and American components and modules that were made by different measurement systems, yet they still fit together. And the International Space Station demonstrates how five different and sometimes competing nations can work together 
because any failure in space could be catastrophic. Ms. Payette also said that seeing Earth from space puts things in perspective about how tiny and tenuous the planet actually is. She noted that there is only a fragile 100 kilometer cushion of air from the ground to space. To put that in perspective, that would take you one hour driving at 100 kilometers an hour to go from the ground to the edge of space to touch the, uh, to touch the edge of space. So anything that affects the cushion will have an immediate effect on all of us. She also noted that from space you go from Vancouver to St. John's in nine minutes and you see a sunrise and sunset every 45 minutes. Ms. Payette's perspective is that our planet is much smaller than we think. And she also said that in space you must work together. It is a dangerous endeavor. You must keep your mind on the pursuit of excellence, otherwise things will go sideways. Her words are very appropriate, especially in today's unsettled world. And now more than ever, we must all work together or things will go sideways on us. Ms. Payette made another point that I think is very applicable for today's convocation ceremony. She said, whether in space or in college, it's all about knowledge. What this means is that education is a journey, not a destination. So continue to build your knowledge and skills and recognize that today is not an end, but just a milestone on the journey of your life. Her final words, I think, were very salient. Champion the values that you believe in. It is important for us to stand up for the things we believe in to make a better society and a stronger community. But we must always be prepared to have a dialogue with those who disagree with us if we are to maintain the democratic structures that underpin our community, society, and country. We may disagree with each other, but it, it, it is on us to be honest and protect our right to hold different perspectives. If we do not protect our ability to respectfully disagree with each other, then we risk a breakdown of our democratic institutions. So as you leave the college today to pursue your path, appreciate the opportunities you have been provided and consider how you will contribute your knowledge, passion, energy to build a better, more prosperous, sustainable, fair, and democratic society. Because as Ms. Payette noted, we all share the same spaceship. Thank you for your time and patience. Enjoy your day. You've earned it. Tomorrow, the work begins. Thank you. Thank you, President Trotter. <clears throat> At this time, Scott McLean, president of the Langara Faculty Association, will bring greetings to convocation from faculty. Good afternoon. I would first like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam and Coast Salish peoples and to thank them. Board members, President Trotter, honored guests, colleagues, and graduates, it is a privilege to extend to you on behalf of the Faculty Association our very best wishes on this special day. Today is an acknowledgement of the hard work and dedication that you and your families have put towards your studies. We appreciate the efforts and the sacrifices you have made in order to accomplish what is being recognized here today. I know that I speak for the entire faculty <clears throat> excuse me, when I tell you that it has been a great joy and honor to have been a part of your journey. We understand that what you have accomplished is not easy and respect the perseverance and commitment that you have all shown. You are inspiring and your success is truly impressive. As faculty, we have the opportunity to make an important contribution in the lives of our students. But learning is a reciprocal process, and teaching and working with you has been a rich learning experience for us, and we want to sincerely thank you for making us better educators. You're now going on to do important work in our communities or to pursue further studies. We know that you will continue to make significant contributions as you move forward in your lives. Thank you for choosing Langara. Congratulations, and we wish you all the best. Okay. Thank you, Scott. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Tung Chan, who will give today's convocation address. Dr. Chan arrived in Canada at age 22 
While learning English and waiting tables, he put himself through his Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of British Columbia. He later went on to complete a general management diploma from the Institute of Canadian Bankers. Dr. Chan is currently the chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21, a member of the board of the Vancouver Foundation, the Laurier Institute, and the Canadian Foundation of Economic Education. In the past, he has been a councillor and deputy mayor of the city of Vancouver, manager of a Royal Bank branch, vice president of the TD Bank Group, and district vice president of TD Canada Trust. He was chief executive officer of success and has volunteered in leadership positions at numerous civic, cultural, business, and educational organizations. Dr. Chan has received the Queen Elizabeth Golden Jubilee Medal. The Diamond Jubilee Medal is a member of the Order of British Columbia, has been appointed an honorary captain in the Royal Canadian Navy, and has received an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from University Canada West. Please extend a warm welcome to Dr. Tung Chan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, platform dignitaries, and graduates. Every time when I hear wonderful introductions like this, I thought to myself, why shouldn't I just have it record it and play it to my mother-in-law? <laughs> because every successful man, there is behind him a surprised mother-in-law. <laughs> I've been asked this afternoon to share with you the story of how someone like myself, coming to this country speaking very little English, has almost no money, can do so much. The fact of the matter is, but for the grace of God, I could have been living in a homeless shelter somewhere downtown east side. I thought of myself being totally very, very lucky. But you know what? In my definition, in my dictionary, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And along the way, I have aged well. I've also picked up a few PhDs. And I've learned also the philosophy of living like a tree. Now, I'll explain all that later. As mentioned, I came to Vancouver in 1974 in April. The only person I knew at the time was my sister and my brother-in-law. The first job I had was waiting on tables at the Terminal City Club downtown. I grew up in a very small village in Hong Kong and had no idea of the things like beef stroganoff, steak tartare, and winner's nissel. So I would take the order, I would place the order, and I would take whatever comes out from the kitchen counter, <laughs> and I served it. Soon after I started, the cook started calling me superstar because I made so many mistakes. When the cook saw me walking into the kitchen, they say, oh, Jesus Christ, here comes tongue. <laughs> and at that time, there was a movie called Superstar, Jesus Christ Superstar. So that's my nickname. The club's dining room opened only from Monday to Friday. On Saturday and Sunday, I work in another restaurant. Why? Because I want to save up the money to go to university. Why? Because I knew that if I want to get ahead, I need to have better education. And I knew also, as a newcomer, I have to learn more about this country. Because in those 
four years, first four years, I never knew how the sun sets on Saturdays and Sundays. I'd be working inside. I'd be waiting on people who are out there celebrating Christmas, New Year's. So I thought the only way I can learn about this country is to go become a volunteer. So on Saturday afternoons, I go down to Chinatown and volunteer for the Immigration Service Society success. And I will be there taking healthy senior citizens to visit Shaden seniors in rest homes. And you know something? In 1990, when I wanted to run for the city of Vancouver, those healthy seniors that I volunteer with end up being the best campaign workers I ever had. Now, UBC's arts faculty accepted me in September of 1974, same year I came here. And I decided to major in sociology. I was fed up with, unlike other people from Hong Kong or Asia, going to commerce, going to electrical engineering, and going to some other technical things. Not that I don't like them, I wanted to learn about humanity. But the true fact was I had given up hope on business, and I've also seen how unpredictable that wealth could be. You see, I went to Holland when I was 18 after high school in Hong Kong. I was supposed to go there to study. But I didn't know that people in Holland speaks Dutch. I had no idea. I was totally unprepared. I went there because a high school or childhood friend of my father had promised him that he will look after me when I get to Holland, that he will put me through school, that he will pay for my education. He actually gave me a one-way ticket to Holland. And my father gave me a couple of hundreds of guilders. I got there. I found out not only I do not have, I did not have the academic credential to be accepted to a university. My uncle wasn't really prepared to fulfill his commitment to my father. I had no friend, had no money. No hope. The thought of killing myself, committing suicide, had entered my mind several times. But I forced myself to look at the positive side, the bright side, and to force myself to develop a sense of positive think thinking. A total stranger came up nowhere. He owns a restaurant, and he took pity on me. He offered me a job as a waiter. And so that it was, for two and a half years, I worked as a waiter six days a week with absolutely no holiday throughout all that two and a half years. 1973, I went back to Hong Kong. I saved up every single guilder I earned from Holland. I had about 30,000 Hong Kong dollars. That was quite a bit of money back then in 73. I answer a newspaper ad in the newspaper to work as a floor trader in one of the stock exchanges in Hong Kong. The stock market was booming at the time. I had no clue, no idea of what is a beta, what is the yield of uh, a stock, what is the price earning ratio, none of that. All I knew was that in the morning I would go in and buy some shares and sell some in the afternoon. And I'll be making money. I also learned there is something called a margin accounts, where you can put up your stock, and the bank will lend you more money, and you buy more, you borrow more, you, you then put it again, and buy more. That's great. At that time, I thought my life's all set. For the rest of my life, I wouldn't have to worry about money. I could live in the luxury, all through. 
then the stock market crashed. Margin was called. I was back to zero, nada, zilch, nothing. I was thinking of killing myself again. But positive thinking, I forced myself to think for the better side of things, and then I decided to come to Canada. I was only 22 years old at the time. So that's why I decided not to go to commerce. That's why I want to study sociology. So first day of school, the professor came into class, a small class, or uh, I took a course that has only about 12 or 13 people. He wrote down his name on the chalkboard, and then he introduced himself. I immediately stood up, and I said, Good morning, sir, and bow. That's how I did it when I was in high school in Hong Kong. I didn't know better. Never gone to high school here, never been to university here. People thought I was crazy. So I learned that there's a lot of cultural things I need to learn. A couple of weeks in, the professor put me aside and said to me, Tang, you never participate in any of the discussions. How come? Why? And I had to confess to him that, you know, I, I hardly can follow what was being discussed. And in a few times that I wanted to say something, I just don't know how to say it. My English is so poor, I, I couldn't say it. And we, we were, in that class, assigned books to read. It's an Arts One program, Liberal Arts One program, it carries nine units. That nine units include English, history, and philosophy. We were reading books like Thomas Hobbes' Love Ivan, Stuart Mill's On Liberty, Machiavelli's The Prince. Had no clue. I didn't know what the books were all about. But Professor Murray Smith was very, very generous. He says, Tongue, understand, don't worry. Why don't you go to take English 099? That's not even English 100. That's the one that is pre-English 100 courses. So I knew at the time that I really, really have to learn and improve my English. For the first year at UBC, I did not talk to anybody who speaks Chinese. I hang out at the international house and I'd make friends with others, like myself, who were struggling to improve their English. On the advice of the English teacher at English 099, Ms. Mary Stout, I started to listen to CBC, CBC News, and also tried to repeat after the newscaster. So if you notice that I have a kind of uh, radio voice, now you know why. When I graduated, I found work as a management trainee at TD. I was determined to do an excellent job. TD has something called Menu of Operations. It has nine volumes, each one as thick as a phone book. And between all of them, it covers everything on how to run a bank branch. I read through every single menu of them, cover to cover. And in some sections, I actually have to read it several times because that's the only way I can understand the content. And in two years, I was promoted from a trainee, from an assistant in a small branch to a district branch in Kelowna. I, I was very happy. And I knew at the time that I had to improve my human relations with the staff. You see, every Thursday night, the staff would go out. It was called a banker's night. We'll go into bar and pub, and we'll buy a drink, and we start uh, taking turns, telling jokes. Now, not only 
I don't, uh, I didn't have any jokes to tell. A lot of times, I didn't even know why the jokes are funny. <laughs> but in order to fit in, I laugh anyways. <laughs> it worked out okay. It worked out okay until one night. I was laughing my heart off like everybody else, and the fellow sitting next door to me leaned over and says, hey, Tan, what's the punchline? <laughs> I had to come clean. I told, told them that I didn't know what the punchline was. I was so embarrassed, totally embarrassed. And I decided right there and then that I am going to develop a sense of humor and learn to tell jokes. <laughs> One day, about six months into the job in Kelowna, the branch manager called me in. He says, Tang, you've done really well. Every bi-monthly staff meetings, you're well prepared, you know exactly the content, and so great. I was on Cloud 9. I was so happy. Until he says, well, Tang, the staff told me, he says, they could understand only half of what she said. You see, my accent was so heavy, and my syntax was always wrong, that the staff couldn't understand. I couldn't understand. So I thought I was going to be fired. And he says, no, Tang, you're a good guy. You know what you're talking about, even though we don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Go join the local Toastmasters club. So I did. The fact that I can stand in front of you making a speech like this and comfortable, that was because all the public speaking training I received at the Toastmaster Club. As a matter of fact, throughout my entire career, and you can even think of those successful people that you have met, I have yet to meet anyone who's not able, who are successful, who are not able to be communicate clearly and have good public speaking skills. And throughout my career, I've always tried to be true to myself, to the point where I refused to change, angl anglicize my name into Tom or Tony. But I'm not so stubborn that I wouldn't try to do my best to reduce my accent. In fact, I have taken courses on accent reductions so that now at least I know the difference between a, B, a, a long A and a short A. And I know to avoid things like when I tell someone, particularly a lady, that I'm going to go to bat for her. I wouldn't say that because she might have thought of other things. <laughs> but now, you're probably wondering, hey, Tang, what do you mean at the beginning that, that you talk about you age well and that you pick up a few PhDs? Well, let me tell you, age for me stands for authentic, generous, and excellent. I've tried to be authentic to myself generous to others, and try to do an excellent job, whatever I do. My PhDs are positive thinking, humorous, determination, or the ability to do public speaking, P, hardworking, H, and dedication, D. What about the living like a tree philosophy? I retired early at age 55 from the position of vice president with TD Bank to become the CEO of Success, a social service organization. My total compensation dropped by 75%. And yet, I gave back half of my first two years of service of my salary to Success. Some people thought, Tang, you're stupid. But I look at how a tree lives its life. It would take only what it needs from the environment. It would take carbon, monoxide, carbon dioxide that's harmful to people. 
and give back to the air, to the environment, oxygen, where it's beneficial to other lives on the planet. Don't you think that is how we should all live? So on this important day of your life, I'd like to wish you all age well, pick up a few PhDs on your way, and live like a tree. Dr. Chan, thank you very much for that inspiring address. On behalf of Langara College, President Trotter would like to present you with a small gift in appreciation of your excellent remarks and for the time that you have spent with us today. And now onto the presentation of the graduands, and I'm sure that's why most of you are here with us today. <laughs> President Trotter, the candidates to be presented to you today and those who are absent have fulfilled all the requirements for their respective credentials. I ask that you confer upon each of them the credential which has been earned. Will the graduands please rise? By the authority granted to me by the government of this province, I admit you and those in absentia to the credentials to which you are entitled. Congratulations. Please be seated. I, I always have to ask now if everybody feels different now that you have gone from being a graduand to a graduate. Such a small number of words can make such a big difference. We'll now begin the presentation of our graduates. When each graduate is announced, they will stand here near the front corner of the stage to have their first photograph taken. They will then be greeted by some of the members of our platform party on my right and have a second photograph taken with President Trotter. This always one seems to be a bit difficult because people forget to stop. So please stop here and have the photograph taken. Audience members who want to move, oh, sorry, faculty who would like to congratulate your graduates may approach the platform to my right. Audience members who want to move closer to the front for a photo of their graduate may come to the same side of the platform when it is close to the time that their graduate will cross the stage. Please be mindful not to block the view of others and return to your seats afterwards so that others may approach the front for photos. I now ask Ian McBain, Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Jacqueline Bradshaw, Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences and Management, and Daniel Thorpe, Dean of Continuing Studies, to announce the names of the graduates. The first group of students are from the Faculty of Arts and are receiving the post-degree diploma in web and mobile app design and development. Graduating with distinction, Seti. Akshita Bandari.
Graduating with distinction, Jaspreet Brar. Graduating with distinction, Lovepreet Brar. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Rajdeep Kaur Brar. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Bharti Chopra. Graduating with distinction, Leonardo Cuelho. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Harman Reet Kaur. Graduating with distinction, Harsimrat Kaur. Harveer Kaur. Graduating with distinction, Jaspreet Kaur. Graduating with distinction, Nikhil Mahotra. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Gaganpreet Messon. Graduating with distinction, Hardshot Panag. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Jaskaran Singh. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Parveer Singh. Kamal Preet Singh Sran. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Jismon Thomas. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Xiaoyu Shu. And now presenting graduates of the Faculty of Social Sciences and Management. Graduating with the post-degree diploma in Applied Planning, Azadwinder Bular. <laughs> Amrit Preet Kaur Dinsa. <laughs> Prabhpreet Singh. <laughs> Updeep Singh. Mr. 
Madeline Snow. Tisha Mariette Thomas. Graduating with distinction, Harman Appal. <clears throat> Graduating with the post degree diploma in business administration, Aditi. <clears throat> Gitika. Pritesh. <laughs> Amrit Pal Kar Aujla. Harpreet Singh Baines. <clears throat> Gurjeet Bali. <clears throat> Akash Bansal. Graduating with distinction, Susanna Bilato Boza. <clears throat> Dhruv Chada. <clears throat> Varun Chotani. Amrit Chautari. <clears throat> Graduating with distinction, Kawing Chu. <clears throat> Mohammed Farhan. Gurleen Gill. <clears throat> Navdeep Singh Hanspal. <clears throat> Graduating with distinction, Suwalan Cheko Ishituka Rebello. Nikhil Katyal. <laughs> Lovepreet Kaur. <laughs> Manpreet Kaur. <clears throat> P. 
Pritpal Kaur. Ravleen Kaur. Sukmin Kaur. Nitin Kumar. Pai Liu. Jatinderpal Singh. Matahu <laughs> Ricardo Perez <laughs> Eduardo Gomez. Kritika Parmar. <laughs> Leon Rodericks. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Victor Hugo Rodriguez Dos Santos. <laughs> Maria Ferraz. Amandeep Kaur Santu. <laughs> Bruno Aoki. Nitan Sharma. <laughs> Priya Sharma. <laughs> Shriya Sharma. Harpreet Kaur Sidhu. <laughs> Randeep Sidhu. Balwinder Singh. <laughs> Charan Gurpreet Singh. <laughs> In
Inderjit Singh. Harasis Singh. Maninder Pal Singh. Nixon Singh. Simrandeep Singh. Varun Sood. Siddharth Takiar. Amit Verma. Rahul Verma. Ravneet Verdi. Barinder Singh Walia. <laughs> Graduating with the post degree diploma in marketing management. Ritika. Sandra Vassel Bo Ishpreet Chuhan Ana Catarina de Macedo Aguiar. <laughs> Jaspreet Dillon. <laughs> Asim Datta. Roberto Gonsalves. <laughs> Kiran Preet Kaur. Rupinder Kaur. <laughs> Anne Huang Li. <laughs> Carlos Lopez Portillo.
Donia Meta. Gustavo Nader Adam. Diego Rondon. Hardik Patel. Hardeep Kaur Randawa. <laughs> Jessica Rebonato. Guilherme Salas. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Akiko Sakai. Camila Schmidt Tibies. <laughs> Tushar Suneha. <laughs> Kevin Vicaria. It's now my pleasure to introduce the graduates of the Diploma in Advanced Accounting, Chi Yuan Paul Tung. Now the Certificate in Advanced Integrative Healing, Eleanor Hannon. Usha Mishra. Marlene Morris. And now the graduates of Advanced Project Management. Emily Sidrash. <laughs> Leandro Pereira. <laughs> and now the graduates of digital film production, Jack Lee. The graduates from the Healthcare Assistance Certificate, Evangeline Guerin. <laughs> Paige Grant. Laura Paul. <laughs> Trent.
Tracy Sparrow. Julie Sparrow. <laughs> and uh, now the graduates from LEAP, the Learning English for Academic Program. Tahani McBull. Risa Tamob. And from the Medical Spa Aesthetics, Afrug Firuza. From the Medical Office Administrator Certificate, Mika Valencia. <laughs> Graduating from Digital Photography, Alicia McLean. Kimberly Reed. <laughs> Helen Spiropoulos. <laughs> Melissa Tam. Now the uh, graduates of the Professional Bookkeeping Certificate, Hilary Grover. <laughs> Glenda Ramos. Sherry Lynn Schatzko. <laughs> Graduating from the Professional Sales Certificate, Max Leal. Graduating from Professional Sales Online, Luis Olidotoya. <laughs> Graduating with a Diploma in Registered Massage Therapy, Harold Keach. Shanae Valk. <laughs> Graduating from the Strategic Resilience for First Responders Certificate, Jacqueline Brind. Anastasia Kletus. <laughs> Graduating from the Therapeutic Touch Practitioner Certificate, Kumiko Hughes.
Joseph Rahim. Leslie Reichert. Susan Rutherford. Well done. Deborah Thomas. Mary Lou Trinquan. Catherine Vale. And graduating from the Volunteer Coordinator Certificate, Maggie Stewart. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your graduates of 2017. Yay. It took them a little while to get into it. <laughs> um, as we bring this afternoon ceremony to a close, I'd like to thank a, take a moment to thank Emily King, who sang Go Canada. <laughs> Emily Helsden, who played the violin prior to the ceremony and who will be playing at the reception. Mike McDonald, who led our procession. Christy Lee Charles, the Musqueam singer and drummer who led our platform party. I'd also like to extend our very sincere appreciation to the many college employees whose contributions have made this a memorable event. Thank you all. It is also my pleasure on behalf of the college and the Langara Students' Union to invite you to a reception in the Langara Students' Union building immediately after the ceremony. Would you please rise and remain standing until the graduates have left the convocation hall? I now declare this convocation closed. Thank you.